Again, happy Mother's Day. Can't say it enough because we appreciate you so much. As we step back in to this lady that has such a special place in my heart, um, I, I admire her. I, I'm thankful that her story is in the Word so that I can read that. And you need to read a little bit more about it, perhaps, and just get acquainted with this special lady. But on this Mother's Day, more than enough, part two. It says in Matthew chapter 15, verse 21, leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from the vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. And Jesus didn't answer, not a word, the Bible says. So the disciples came to him and urged him, send her away. Put her out. Get, get rid of her. For she keeps crying after us. And Jesus answered, apparently to her, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. And the woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. She said, yes, it is, Lord. Even the dogs eat from the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. So, every one of us have had needs and problems. Every one of us have had those uh, times when life was pressing in on us. And we needed someone that we could turn to for a solution. We needed someone who, who could step into our lives and make a difference. God is who we really need to step into our lives. This is the situation that we're looking at in this passage today. This lady had exhausted everything that she knew to do. And she was reaching out to her last ray of hope. Reaching out for the only one who could truly help. So Jesus is approached by this mother who's in a desperate situation. She needs something, and he's the answer to that need. So the woman brings a petition, a request, and lays it before him. The reason she came was she was concerned about her daughter, and she wanted help. She needed help for that daughter. The reason that she cried out the way that she did was because her child was in need. And the answer to that need was right in front of her. The reason she called to Jesus was that he was her only hope, her last ray of hope. So she persisted. That was point two that we looked at last week that we started, got started in. The woman was persistent. She wasn't going to let obstacles stop her. And there was obstacles to her faith. She met resistance at every turn. She had to overcome the race situation because 
it said that she was from the area of, of Tyre and Sodom. And, and they, they were not liked by the Jews. She was a Gentile and she was calling out to Jesus using the term that meant his, he was Messiah. So here was this Gentile calling out to the Jewish Messiah. And the disciples didn't like that. And they wanted to get rid of her because of that. So she had to overcome the, the prejudice of religion. Jesus wouldn't answer her. And the disciples was whispering in Jesus' ear, get rid of her. Get rid of her now. This is bad PR. We don't need this. She's just following us and crying after us. She had to overcome rejection. Because on the very heels of saying, I was sent to Israel, the children. Then Jesus said, it's not good to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. The inference there is very clear. Jesus was rejecting her the way the disciples had. And he was referring to her as a dog. But none of that meant anything to her. She needed help. And she was going after that help. She cried after him. She faced reality. Her daughter needed deliverance because she was possessed. And she was going to press her way through. Listen, your faith will not be determined by what you receive from God. Your faith will be determined by what it takes to stop you from getting to God. What's it going to take to stop you? A good television program? Uh, maybe a day at the beach? May maybe society and their thoughts? There there's all kinds of uh, little realities that come up that we have to face and overcome. The reality is we need Jesus in our heart. And we have a thousand things saying no, no. Do this instead, do this instead. She brushed all of those aside. She really wasn't asking for everything. All she was asking for was a dog's portion just the crumbs because a crumb from the master's hand is worth much more than a banquet table set by others so there was an obstacle to her faith and that's where we're going to take up today the we looked at the opportunities of faith. Now we look at the obstacles or the obligations to faith. You know, there's a lot of people who would have just given up and walked away. There were a lot of people that would have got offended and said, how dare him? But the desperation that she felt for the need of her daughter receiving help was much greater than anything that she could have faced. When Jesus ignored her, many people in that place would have just walked away. The disciples played the race card. How easy it would have been to turn and just walk away when she was compared to a dog. But yet she 
persisted. She pushed forward. Most of us would have thrown our hands up. I probably would have. Just thrown my hands up in frustration, stormed off in anger and said, forget it. But then her daughter would have perished. Her daughter would have continued in that downward spiral, being controlled by this demonic spirit. She could have said, I don't need this. So much for your God of love, your message of compassion. You're nothing more than a narrow-minded, bigoted, religious man. How easy it would have been to throw that out and just say, I don't want anything from your religion. That is the way that many react even today. There's there's so many that just push God aside and say, I don't I don't need you, I don't want you, I don't trust you. They want what they want, but they don't want to do what God wants. But not this woman. This mother who had the burden of her child upon her heart. She persisted in spite of everything that was being thrown in her pathway. She stepped over every stumbling block. She went around every barrier and kept crying out. She persisted because there was too much at stake. Her little daughter needed to be delivered from that bondage that she was in. And her great hope was Jesus. Her family needed to be saved. She needed help and she became determined to get it. A crumb might be all that she could get. And she was willing to face that fact. But she knew that a crumb from the hand of Jesus would be more than enough. It would meet the need. It would fulfill that that pressure point. And she wasn't going to give up until she got what she needed. Even though it was just being pushed in her face. Who she was. What she was. And what they were. How much this morning does your problem mean to you? How much does that dream that you have mean to you? How much does that pressure of life coming against you and pushing down, how much does that mean to you? Does it mean that you're going to persist, that you're going to continue to press on? Does it mean that you're going to go around every obstacle? Have you encountered obstacles in your pathway that made you throw up your hands and walk away? More than once, I wanted to quit. More than once, I've wanted to walk away. But God was the answer that I needed, and I I knew it. He changed my life so drastically. He'll do that for you also. You might have looked at the hypocrisy of the church, and oh yeah, it's full of hypocrites. It's... It's full of hypocrisy. I, I know that. I saw that. But it's full of honesty. The love of God also. Does everybody that comes to church, do they love you like Jesus? No. 
Does everybody that sits on these chairs, are, are they hypocrisy free? Uh-uh. But there are some that love you, that live what they say. So just saying God's people don't care, that's not good enough. Because there are people who do. To say the church don't care, so you're not going to care either, that's wrong. Have you decided that God can't help you? Or that Jesus won't help you? If so, take a clue from this mother. See what's going on in her life and how she persisted. Because, sir, lady, there's too much at stake. That dream you had, it's at stake. That, that need that you have, that problem that you're facing, there's an answer, and his name is Jesus. Be like this poor mother who had nothing, but she had nothing to lose either. Keep bringing that need to Jesus until he answers it. Keep seeking his face until you hear his response. Keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. And in his time, he'll hand you that morsel of answered prayer that you need so desperately. He will hand it to you. It took my mom 13. Long years of morning and night praying for me. And it wasn't the first 13 years of my life, it was the second 13 years of my life. Because I walked away from God. I threw up my hands. I said, I'm going out and have fun. I'm, I'm going to just leave this stuff behind. And I started living a life that I am not proud of. But my mom would pray, and she would call on God, and she would persist. And then when I was 26 years old, 27 really, God gave me an offer I couldn't refuse. My mom rejoiced with me. Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8 says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. Those who seek find. And to the one who knocks, the door will be open. This woman received a great prize. In Matthew chapter 15, verse 28, Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. You see, Jesus responded to her faith. Her persistence. He was amazed by the depth of her faith. Jesus had tested that faith with hard, hard words and her faith had risen to the challenge. Her faith overcame that harshness of word. Her faith exceeded that of the people that he had come to save. Here was a Gentile dog that had more faith than the Jewish scribes, Pharisees, Sadducees, or priests. That kind of faith 
excites Jesus. So Jesus rewarded her faith. He rewarded her faith by giving her exactly what she had asked for. A healed daughter. Her faith was so strong that she, she didn't ask for proof. She said, oh yeah, my daughter's healed, prove it. No, she accepted it. She took Jesus at his word. She turned around and she went home to her family. And when she got there, she found out what a blessing. Her daughter was healed. The Bible says that she was acting out very, very uh, uh, harshly and variantly. And now she's healed. That's the reward of her faith. That's the reward of her persistence. I realize that some of you who are watching today, listening today, you're looking at situations and problems that are every bit as hard and painful as that which was faced by this woman. I know that many of you have prayed and you have sought God and you you. You have laid your situation before him, and things just remain as the, the same as they were. I know that the devil, I know the flesh, they whisper in your ear right now, it's no use. God doesn't care about you. I know that you're hearing that inside. Go away. Don't, don't bother him with this anymore. It's never going to change. It's always going to be like this. I know that some of you are discouraged and you feel defeated. And you wonder if there's any hope anywhere. Is there any help for you again? Can I tell you to take heart? Because there is hope. God's still on the throne. And Jesus still sits at his right hand making intercession for us. Today might be the very day that you've longed for for so long. Today might be the day that the master responds to your cries to your pleas. Today might be the day when you see that mountain that stands in your way removed. Today might be the day when you come to him and you call on him and he responds to you. Today might be the day when God speaks in your heart and he says it's going to be all right. I'll take care of it. Don't worry about it anymore. Today might be the day when his peace replaces your pain. And in that heart that was so painful, you know the peace of Almighty God The help that you need is one whispered prayer away. So bring that need to him today. Bring it with faith. Bring it and bring it and bring it until you hear those words that come from him. Don't worry, I'll take care of it. That need is fixed. It's met. Bring it to him. Place it in his hands and let him take care of it. He'll make things like they ought to be. If you'll follow his voice and do what he asks. 
You might say, well, Pastor Lewis, you don't understand. My situation's bigger than that. My problem is much deeper than that. I've tried before. I can't change. Maybe you're one of those that said, my, my daddy was an alcoholic and I'm an alcoholic. Or my parents were drug addicts, I'm a drug addict. Maybe you'll say, my family never had anything and I don't have anything. So I'll do whatever I need to do to survive. Maybe you've said about your children, they've made their bed and now they can lay in it. There's no help for them. I might not understand your problem. But he does. I might can't help. But he can. And I'm, I'm willing to bind my heart with yours. Just about the time you don't think he can do it. You need to read through this word. Because Jairus, that man from the temple, he knew Jesus is the answer. He placed his daughters in the hands of Jesus. And he raised her from the dead. Over there's Lazarus. Lazarus knew that he could trust Jesus. And for four days he laid in the tomb. Mary and Martha had placed him in. And suddenly Jesus calls out, Lazarus, come forth. There was a multitude that was following Jesus. And they were hungry and they were to the point of of almost passing out. They were so hungry. Jesus took a sack lunch from a young boy and broke it and met every need in that multitude. 5,000 men, not counting the ladies and the kids. The lepers came to him and they were healed. The disciples were in a boat that was about to sink and he calmed the waves and still the sea. The blind man got new eyes and he could see. The deaf man could hear. The crippled man could walk. The man who was possessed by demons were was freed even though there, there was a a whole legion of them. He was set free. Jesus hung on a cross so that that could happen. He died there and his mother had to watch. She was at the foot of the cross They take his body down. They carry it over to a borrowed grave. Three days later, you look in that grave. And there he is. Risen. Empty. Hope that was dead is now alive. That same hope that's here with us today. He rose. He lives. He intercedes for you, Mama. For you, sir. For you, young lady. If he can do all of those things, and that's just a small sample of what you'll find in this book, 
He can answer your prayers if you'll come to him again. A little crumb from the Lord's table. That might be all you need today. But it's enough. He says it is. Others may need him to drop a whole platter of food down to them. He can do that too. He can feed you till you're full. Whatever you need today, call out to him. The God that I serve. The Lord who is risen can meet you right where you're at. At that very point of need. He'll answer your prayer. Whatever it may be. So we're going to come before you and share with you a time of communion.